In my first week back in the Pentagon, I did want to address my recent hospital stay and some of the issues around it. I'm recovering well, but as you can see, I'm still recovering. I'm still having some leg pain and doing physical therapy to get past it. I'm deeply grateful to my doctors and the nursing staff at Walter Reed, and I very much appreciate all the good wishes. But I want to be crystal clear. We did not handle this right, and I did not handle this right. I should have told the president about my cancer diagnosis. I should have also told my team and the American public. And I take full responsibility. I apologize to my teammates and to the American people. Now, I want to make it very clear that there were no gaps in authorities and no risk to the department's command and control. At every moment, either I or the deputy secretary was in full charge. And we've already put in place some new procedures to make sure that any lapses in notification don't happen. In the future, if the deputy secretary needs to temporarily assume the, off the duties of my office, she and several White House offices will be immediately notified, including the White House Situation Room. And so will key officials across the department. And the reason for that assumption of duties will be included in writing. Now, I want you all to know, that, to know why this happened. I was being treated for prostate cancer. The news shook me, and I know that it shakes so many others, especially in the black community. It was a gut punch. And frankly, my first instinct was to keep it private. I don't think it's news that I'm a pretty private guy. I never like uh, burdening others with my problems. It's just not my way. But I've learned from this experience. So taking this kind of job means losing some of the privacy that most of us expect. The American people have a right to know if their leaders are facing health challenges that might affect their ability to perform their duties, even temporarily. So a wider circle should have been notified, especially the president. I'll take your questions today, but as you know, we've got an ongoing internal review as well as a DOD Inspector General review that we fully support. So I may have to discuss some aspects later. Now, let me back up a bit. As you know, on 22nd December, I had a minimally invasive procedure to cure me of my recently diagnosed prostate cancer. And then I hit some bad luck during what is usually a pretty easy recovery. On January 1st, I felt severe leg pain and, and pain in the abdomen and hip. And that evening, an ambulance took me to Walter Reed. The doctors found that I had several issues that needed treatment, including a bladder infection and abdominal problems. On January 2nd, I was also experiencing fever and chills and shallow breathing. The medical staff decided to transfer me to the critical care unit for several days for, for closer monitoring and better uh, team care by my doctors. And the deputy secretary assumed the functions and duties of my office, which happens when necessary. Her senior staff, my senior staff, and the joint staff were notified of this through our regular email notification procedures. And I never directed anyone to keep my January hospitalization from the White House. On January 5th, I resumed my functions and duties as secretary from the hospital. I was functioning, functioning well mentally, but not so well physically, and so I stayed at Walter Reed for additional time uh, for additional treatment, including physical therapy, for some lingering issues with my leg. Now, I'm offering all of this as an explanation and not an excuse. I am very proud of what we've achieved at the department over the past three years but we fell short on this one. As a rule, I don't talk about conversations with my boss, but I can tell you I've apologized directly to President Biden. And I've told him that I'm deeply sorry for not letting him know immediately that I received a heavy diagnosis and was getting treatment. And he has responded with the grace and warm heart that anyone who knows President Biden would expect. And I'm grateful for his full confidence in me.